Today I have for you something quite special, and that is this dollop of horror. Now recently there's been a glut of very cheap beginner student trumpets on Trade Me, and the question I've been asked quite a lot is, are these worth buying for a beginner? Um, and interestingly, if you look a little bit further, these aren't necessarily all made in China. There is now becoming a an increasing supply of Indian-made, really cheap trumpets. And that is what I have here. This trumpet is worth nothing, but costs about 40 US dollars. Um, and it is a supposedly a metal trumpet, uh, and it comes from India. So in this video, we are going to unbox it. We're going to see whether it works out of the box. And uh, I'll hopefully give you guys some idea about whether these are worth anything. So, the first thing I note before I go and slice the arteries of this is that the brand on it is SAIMusical.com. Now, SAI, SAI Musical is the same people who manufactured the really awful tenor sousaphone that I used to have. Um, and you can, I've done a couple of videos on that instrument, which you'll be able to see by sort of clicking on uh, some of the links uh, that you would get presented with if I remember to do this after I upload the video. Um, and that, was, that instrument was one of the worst instruments I've ever played. So this brand fills me with dread. Anyway, I'm going to unbox this by slicing gently through the sellotape. And what do I have inside? Do you reckon there's a case for a $40 instrument? Is there a case? No. There is a empty plastic bag because everyone needs an empty plastic bag in their lives. There's this little piece of bubble wrap. It feels disgusting. Everyone needs that in their life. There is a mouthpiece loose in the case that uh, uh, looks awful, but it's actually got SAI Musical India written around the rim. And I shall now withdraw the trumpet from its sarcophagus of cardboard. And this is it here. One, two, two and a half turns of bubble wrap is all you need to protect a high quality musical instrument. And then a little bit of plastic. And it's actually sealed. Is it sealed at both ends? No. Dun da da dun. Here we go. Look at that. The first thing I notice is that the edges around the bell are a little bit sharp. They uh, have been made with lots of care. There is not a brand on it. There are there is a serial number. The serial number is sixteen million one hundred and three thousand and four. Interestingly, the, the numbers aren't stamped in a line. Some of them are a little bit offset, which suggests that that's been made well. Right. So let's investigate the qualities of this instrument. Firstly, the third valve fingering is loose, it is tight, the nut's done up very tightly, in fact it's done up so tightly I can't, I, I can loosen that, but it just wobbles around in the breeze there. Um, <laughs> the thickness of the cork on this water key is just massive. The felts aren't attached, in fact that isn't even felt, that feels like belly button lint. Um, on the bottom of the valves is just awful. The valves work well out of the box. Um, the first valve tuning slide just barely moves. Um, the third valve tuning slide just barely moves. Gosh. Um, yeah, well done, India. What a classy, classy instrument this is. 
I'm not going to use the mouthpiece that comes with it just to see whether I can make a sound. So BRB. All right. So what I um, what I've done now is taken the valves out, put some valve oil on them, and in doing so, I noticed that there is so much residue left from the manufacturing process. Everything sort of has a scrapey, gritty noise, and that includes when you undo and redo the valves. Um, the valves have a bit of an unusual design, and there's actually a lot of weight to this. I don't know what metal I've, I've used, but it's got a little bit more heft than what I'm, uh, I'm, I'm exactly used to. Um, the valves also feel like they've got a lot of grit in there too, so if you actually get one of these, you'll want to give it a really thorough cleaning. And I also noticed that around the screw threads where the valves screw in, there's a whole lot of black lubricant. I'm not sure whether that's just dirt and grime from the manufacturing processes, or whether they've used motor oil as a form of lubricant. Perhaps we will never know. But it looks weird and it smells quite funny too. And if you use all of your might and get the main tuning slide out, there is bits of discoloration, meaning the metal's got a bit too hot. There are bits of solder and flux and other gunk caked on the inside of these tubes. It's got a copper colour to it, and I don't know whether they've chosen to use copper instead of brass, but Perhaps that's the metal that they had lying around. I don't really know. And it's not any better when you look throughout the rest of the instrument. Oh, that's hard. Um, so anyway, I have uh, picked up this instrument. I've tried playing a few notes. The instrument's harmonics are actually in tune with each other. So that's a vast improvement over that tenor sousaphone thing. Abomination that I had. Um... But the valves are so heavy, it's just absolutely ridiculous. Oh, and also the second valve is about two millimeters shorter than the other valves, just, just in case you were wondering. Um, but my fingers, after just two minutes of playing, got so sore um, because of the amount of effort it takes to push these valves down. It is unreal. Um, but look, I'm going to play a little bit of Bach's Bardinieri from Suite Number no. 2, which is a beautiful piece of music. I'm using a genuine Vincent Bach 3C mouthpiece, which costs three times more than this trumpet does. Um, and uh, whilst I'm playing, you'll have a lovely montage of some photos, which show the various qualities of this instrument. Would I recommend it? Actually, that's interesting. The valves don't look like they're square. It looks like the valves are on a slight angle. It doesn't look like that is a perfect right angle. But anyway, so would I recommend this? Well, if you've got a very young child... Something's... What's rattling there? Oh, it's the mouthpiece. Oh, the mouthpiece doesn't fit very well. Why is that? Because the hole's not round. That's good, that's nice, as uh, they would say. Um, if you had a very young child who's not interested in quality, and uh, you want them to have a play around, then perhaps this is a worthy $40 investment, considering that that is dinner for two, I don't know, dinner for one, perhaps. Um, and this is certainly a lot cheaper than a plastic trumpet, and in many ways better because it has that resonance that goes with being made of some form of metal, whatever this happens to be constructed out of. Um, but if you're looking for a serious instrument, no. No. I can, when I take the tuning slide out, you get a particular smell. I'm not quite sure whether that's syphilis or perhaps something else, but it's just horrid. Just horrid. Anyway, I'll now play you a glorious piece of music. Bach's Bardinieri from Suite Number no. 2. 